All right, let's start. Uh, good morning. Today is Tuesday, so Narad Bhakti Sutra. That's what we're going to be studying. So let's do the prayers first. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasme Shri Guru Venama, Om Bhu Swaha, Tatsavitra Vare Neyam, Bargo Devasya Dhimahi, Diyo Yonaha, Prachodayat, Asto Ma Satgamya, Tamso Ma Jyotirgamya, Mrityor Ma Amritam Gamya, Om Sehna Vavatu, Sehna Bhunaktu, Sehviryam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidveshavahi, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. When we study a scripture of this caliber, it's good to remember then each verse what the message we are getting. So that's the reason I tell you that, like a, uh, in 81 verses, there are eight chapters, and each chapter is further divided into the sections. And section according to the message we are supposed to receive from there. So in chapter one, section three, which was verse 15 to 24, Naraj is defining this divine love for us. It's a definition because we all want to have this divine love, which is also called Parabhakti. See, a Parabhakti is a rituals. Parabhakti is that love for God. So he's defining it for us. And now in chapter two, section one, he gives us the greatness of this divine love. How great this is. Then after that, he will tell us how to kindle this divine love because it's not just only reading and understanding, but ultimately we have to learn how to kindle this divine love. How to develop this divine love. And that will come in future verses. Okay. So right now, verse number 28 to 33, because that's where we are. We're going to start with 28 today. How to kindle this divine love. Okay. So if you remember the last verse, verse number 27, which we did last week, he said, because of God's dislike for egoism, and because of his love for meekness, devotion alone is superior. Devotion alone. So over here we can see that this is what he wants us to cultivate. Dislike for egoism. Egoism is a wrong identification with our self, our achievements, our name, our fame our acquisitions and he loves when we are, when we surrender. Meekness means surrender. Surrendering to this higher power. So let's start our class with verse number 28 today. How to kindle this? How to create this kind of a surrender also, meekness also. Tasyaha jnanam eva sadhanam iti ekehe. Tasya for devotion. Because the whole thing is for devotion, for love for God. Jnanam eva, knowledge alone. Sadhanam means, iti means das, eke means some acharyas. So eke. So few acharyas say this. So for the love divine, knowledge alone is the means. So say some Acharyas. So Naraj is 
giving some other acharyas opinion about that that some great teachers insist that devotion can germinate and grow only in the light of knowledge because we can see the more we know so this is a knowledge knowledge about god the more one knows the other the more one comes to appreciate and that's how the love grows love deepens and expands with the completeness of one's knowledge of the beloved that's why even for the worldly love we spend some time to know somebody when we know somebody somebody's qualities sure we find that we are in love so when the seeker comes to comprehend more and more thoroughly the glories of god god which is everywhere cannot see that god with our eyes we saw that arjun could not see even the lord krishna himself was telling him i am everywhere but he could not see when with god's grace he could see god everywhere then we saw that how he was praying to him how he got affected by that vision so that's why knowledge is important it is the very source from which the entire universe of names and fames have arisen everything has come out of god and by whose grace alone the universe is maintained and then when we know all this devotion automatically increases so god who is holding the universe god who created it but we got to see that mere dry knowledge alone is not sufficient so devotion to an ideal entirely depends upon our faith also and our love for it also so knowledge is the source of bhakti is not wrong but if we understand that bhakti cannot come to shine without knowledge certainly it is not an absurd statement at all because lord himself in the gita says among them the self controlled gyani who has a single pointed devotion to me is the best he even said that so gyan is needed but then we do see some examples we see the example of shabri example of dhruv who was a little child they didn't have any knowledge parlat but remember those are the exceptions they had this knowledge in the previous lives also that's why they could love god the way they did so this sutra is clearly indicating the general rule and prescribing for the larger numbers and that's why this acharya is quoted here and discussing the general rule which is found true in majority of the people so he says that some people develop this love with the knowledge it's almost like if somebody gives you a shaligram shaligram looks like a stone you will say it's just a stone what can i do with it but person says no this is a shaligram so with that kind of a knowledge you will develop some love for that stone otherwise it's just a stone but then if somebody says it has been worshiped for the last 5000 years automatically your love will increase there are so many different people they have worshiped this stone which is a shaligram then if somebody says this shaligram was worshiped by sant tulsidas also
And that's why this is established over here. Your love for that stone will further enhance. So that is the knowledge. So knowledge, right knowledge increases your love. So as the knowledge is increasing, your love is increasing. That's why some people say in order to develop love for God, you have to increase knowledge. For example, God is seated in your heart. God is the one which is maintaining this body. Your love for God will increase. Then we hear from the great teachers that he is your eternal father, he is your eternal mother. From endless lives and your love will increase if you really believe in it. Then we hear that he is the one who has created all this air also, which we breathe with. Then we have love more because without air, we cannot sustain this body. So we are breathing his air. So this love is being enhanced with this. Just a simple statement if you truly believe in it. That's why Rishi Vasheshta told Ram in Yoga Vasheshta that even if you have to beg in the street of Chandal in order to get knowledge, it is worth it. Nobody should stay ignorant. Varam Sharam Astasya Chandal Vidushu Bhikshaha Artham Matnam Ramna Murkhe Hat Jeevitam Don't stay murak. Don't stay ignorant. Knowledge is the sadhan to enhance our life. So this is what we get from this particular verse. Now how about the other acharyas? Because he said some acharyas say it. What do the other acharyas say? See, this is the beauty of that land of ours where the rishis, the yogis, the scholars, they openly talked about it. They gave your opinion, their own opinions. Not to brag about it, but to, to talk about their experience. So this is experience-based knowledge. So now what do others say? Anyo anye ashretvam iti anye. That means mutual dependence. Iti means thus, anya means others. So mutually dependent declare others. So there are other teachers, equally great acharyas. Equally great, there is no higher or lower. They are just talking from their own experience. So in their deep investigations into the nature and function of devotion and knowledge, because what is mutual dependence? It's a love and knowledge. So devotion and knowledge detected that there is a mutual dependence between the devotion and knowledge. So that means each one of them encourages the other and in their mutual Interdependence, they set up a cycle of forces. More knowledge, more love. More love, more knowledge. You just, they just, they don't contradict each other according to the other acharyas. They say they help each other. So each grows to thrive under the protecting shade of the other. So they both need, just like a, Viragya and Abhyas. They help each other. More Abhyas, more Viragya. More Viragya, more Abhyas. Over here, we, we are talking about the knowledge and the devotion. Love for God. 
So without any devotion at all to the ideal, a person cannot really inquire into and gather knowledge, will not put time into it, will not investigate. You got to have a love for it. And when we investigate, love grows. So when the understanding and knowledge of the ideal grows to be more clear, because knowledge is the one which is giving us the clarity and more deep our devotion for it also expand and heighten. So it is in this sense that some Acharyas insist that knowledge and devotion depend mutually upon each other. Mutually depending. So we don't have to do one or the other. We know that bhakti or the devotion is the attitude of the heart. And jnana or a knowledge is the attitude of the intellect. That's why us human beings have both. We have a head also, we have a heart also. And we are supposed to use both of them so that we grow towards the creator. So must rise simultaneously in the heart and in the head also. So where the joy of bhakti expresses or spreads that's where we see the peak of supreme devotion. And we see the infinite knowledge of the supreme self also. No matter which scripture we study, when we studied Valmiki's Ramayana, we saw that knowledge and bhakti both. Tulsi Das Ji's Ramayana when we recite, Gyan and bhakti both. So both are needed simultaneously. So bhakti's fulfillment is in knowledge. Knowledge revels in bhakti. And it is equally true that where there is the knowledge, knowledge of the divine, I'm not talking about this secular knowledge, knowledge of the divine, there alone is the infinite devotion for the Lord. So devotion and knowledge feed each other. Knowledge leads to devotion and devotion leads to knowledge. We got to always remember that there are two kinds of knowledge. So he's not talking about the lower knowledge here. See, just like a bhakti also, they can be upper bhakti and upper bhakti. Knowledge can be two kinds too. There's a theoretical knowledge. Bookish knowledge, as it's said. So you have, you may recite the whole scripture or memorize even the whole scripture, but that knowledge has not grown any love inside you. That is just a theoretical knowledge. In Hindi, it's called a tota ratat jnana. It's only a memorization. It has not sunk deeper into it. But another kind of a knowledge, which arises from within, it comes when we surrender to God. When we are getting the knowledge from the scriptures even though or from a guru but at the same time we do the sadhana also we are attaching our mind to god then you see that the realizations have come truth coming from inside the knowledge coming from inside it's not theoretical alone now so this happens only because of the sadhana and that is bhakti. And when you engage in bhakti, you start developing knowledge from within. And this is what Lord Krishna called Ritambra Tatra Pragya. Okay, so Ritambra Tatra Pragya is 
inner knowledge, realized knowledge. And Patanjali also used this term, Ritabra Tatra Pragya. This is a, a level of Samadhi. Your Samadhi is full of knowledge. In that Samadhi, your intuition is heightened to that level. That is realized knowledge. But first, in order to even sit in a Samadhi, you got to have a love for it too. So without love, you cannot do it. So it's almost like a outer knowledge, theoretical knowledge with experience, with the practice, sadhana, you this get this inner knowledge, fountain hood of knowledge. It's almost like if I can give you the example, <clears throat> you have a diya. You keep on pouring the ghee in it or oil in it, some kind of a fuel in it, and it will keep on burning. So it will burn only as long as you keep on adding. That is a theoretical knowledge. But then you have seen if you have gone to Jwala Mukhi temple in North India. For thousands of years, those lamps are lit. So inner fuel, constantly day and night they are burning. That's why the temple is called this is Mata's Mandar, Jwala Mukhi Mandar. I'm sure some of you have visited. So it's like an inner knowledge which never ends. Okay, but initially at our level, sure we need to put the knowledge, theoretical knowledge also. So first you do sadhana, attain the theoretical knowledge and move towards the realization. Which one comes first? Some people say, you really cannot answer that. Which came first? Mango seed or a mango tree? You cannot have a tree without a seed, but you cannot have a seed without the tree either. It just becomes a cycle. So this is what he's saying, mutually dependent relationship between devotion and knowledge. So realization increases devotion and devotion increases further realization. Okay, so there's no need to argue about it, just understanding it and doing the sadhana towards it. Now in next verse, Swayam Fal Rupat Iti Brahm Kumaraha Swayam by itself, without any other cause, Swayam Fal Rupat gives its reward, its fall. Iti means thus, Brahm Kumara, the sons of Brahma, the creator. Some people say this Brahm Kumar is an Araji. He is also a Brahma son. But then this is a plural word, word Kumara. Brahma ji has other sons also. And those sons are the one. So some translators, they say he is talking about his brothers. Sanak, Sanandan, Sanatan, Sanat Kumar. They say he is talking about them. So it doesn't matter, but he is giving another opinion over here. He says, Bhakti. So it over means Bhakti. Bhakti is its own fruit. So what do we get from Bhakti? <laughs> bhakti itself. <laughs> Loving God, just that is the fruit itself. Love. Thus say the sons of Brahma, the creator. So God's love is its own fruit. Somebody says, why do you morning, evening worship God? What do you get out of it? <laughs> love for God. That's all. We don't have to get anything from God. We got to get God out of God. This is what it means. Knowledge comes or not, it doesn't matter as long as uh, I have prem for God. That's all. So this is uh, Brahm Kumar saying. 
so love alone can breed love in fact love springs from love alone a devotee is born for devotion there is no other purpose and he seeks his fulfillment nowhere else but in his own devotion that's it there is no other fruit does not even care for any fruit his fruit is only a love for god more he pours out himself in love for the lord of his heart the more his love increases we got to see my love for god is that love increasing day by day or not we often think that oh i love god so my worldly things should be better my health should be better my family should be better then you are not looking for love for god is my love for god is increasing or not this is narad ji saying over here so we got to peek inside our own heart do i love god more than i did last year last week last month whatever we can remember so the way to reach it also is his love for the lord so in devotion divine love is both the means and the goal okay don't use god for worldly fruit i don't use worldly things for god this god is the means god is the end both the way and the destination so devotion rises in some people sometimes not out of any other special cause it just emerges out by itself very naturally very readily entire personality of the devotee is throbbing it's like a irresistible love if i forget god somewhere there should be a tadpana inside how could i forget god that is irresistible love so devotion in the heart grows to discover its own fulfillment this is the opinion of sanat kumars the sons of the creator himself so son of Br- brahma ji is saying in my opinion bhakti is not dependent on knowledge it's independent that's another way you can look at it it's independent because lord krishna also what did he say in chapter 10 te sham satat yukta naam bhajtam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yoga tam yen maam upyanti te he says i give the knowledge and understanding of the metaphysical science also so that my devotee can understand it all that means this maya devotee can understand maya he says to those who are ever united with me so if we are united with god knowledge comes automatically so he says to those who are ever united with me and lovingly adore me bhajatam priti purvakam by which they come to me so when we go to god in our own little altars in our home just remember that god is there just go there just to connect with him with the love everything comes automatically so swayam phal rooptah iti brahm kumara so if we learn how to attach our mind and heart to god engage in devotion and knowledge automatically bhagavat 
Quran says the same thing. It's almost like uh, when we eat, from eating uh, the ras, ras of that eating, it says, Tushti Pushti Kshud Payo Nughasanam. So that means from that ras, everything happens, whether there is a blood inside us or the flesh or the muscles or the bones. So Bhagavad Puran uses the word from ras comes the rakt, from rakt to the mass, to the meta, to haddi, everything happens automatically. We don't have to think about it. The same way if you connect with that higher power, just love God for the sake of loving God, everything will happen automatically. So our job is to love him. You don't have to think about it separately. You don't have to ask about it. You don't have to figure it out. Did I ask this today or not? So this is what Naradji is saying. Bhakti is like that independent of Jnana and Viragya, etc. He even uses, there is another scripture, Narad Pancharatra. Over there he says, Bhakti is like Maharani. Everything else is under Bhakti. Bhakti is the supreme. Okay. So now, in verse number 31, he's giving us some examples to clarify this same thought. Raj grihi bhojan adishu tathaiva drisht vat. Raj grihi bhojan adishu. In the examples of king, Raj means king, grihi means home, bhojan means dinner, food. Tathaiva, in the same manner. Drishtvat, because it is the same, demonstrated. So he says, because it is a scene demonstrated as such in the examples of a palace, dinner, etc. King, home, etc. King's home is the palace. So in the last three sutras, 28, 29, 30, we were informed of the three different opinions given out by the great Acharyas. Regarding the exact means of developing devotion. And just to summarize it, knowledge, mutual dependence, and its own fruit. These are the three opinions he said. Okay. So just to show that these three factors are not come, they are not com competing with each other. He is giving us these two examples: palace and the dinner. Just like to know the king is good, it will definitely add certainty to the individual, a special status in the society. But that is not sufficient. That is a knowledge. That is not sufficient. So if he wants to enjoy the royal company, share the royal trust, He got to become a, a confident of the king in the palace. So that means he needs to do something about it. He might have to become a royal servant. He must learn how to love and serve the king until he can get the king's favors. So a mere knowledge about the highness of the king is not going to give him anything. So the same way, if we keep on hearing the teachers, keep on reading about the scriptures, the books, it's not sufficient enough. As, as I was saying earlier, just like a theoretical knowledge is not giving us the infinite wisdom or the understanding for ourselves. Even the Mahavakyas, Without having a full understanding, without bringing the qualities of those Mahavakyas in our life, 
वट आर द महावाक्य असी अहम ब्रह्मास्मी जिस रेसिटेशन ऑफ दो महावाक्य इज नॉट गोइंग टू टेक अस क्लोजर टू गॉड so this is what he is trying to tell us in this if we want to enjoy the company of god ultimately we have to come to live the true godhood status bring those qualities in our that is what's called sadhana so this example palace and the food the food is what we can know all about food we can have the best cookbooks or download all kinds of recipes but if you don't cook them and ultimately if you don't eat them it's not going to quench our hunger so that's why he gave us the example of the dinner also so devotion is not for just saying that i'm a devotee devotee should seek for the experience of the lord's bliss and grace and that's what he told us earlier we got to let go of the ego and bring a humility in our personality so mere learning merely the proportions of the ingredients for the food is not enough we have to go into the kitchen make sure ingredients are there learn how to cook then eat only then will enjoy actual experience of the joy comes when we have done all all that so devotion is no doubt its own fulfillment swayam phal roop but what is devotion that is what's needed a devotee gains the full sense of his fulfillment only when he comes to experience the lord's presence in his own heart when we say god is everywhere that means in our heart also if god is sitting in my heart how come i am thinking on godly thoughts love alone enhances love devotion given at the lord's altar increases the existing devotion in the heart of the seeker Okay, that's why I said that we got to look at it. Is my love for my Lord is more today or not? Not because of certain conditions. Not because I got something, gained something. Just love. My love is more or not? Because we have taken birth in this beautiful human body to love God more. We made this promise in the womb of our mothers. All of us did. we prayed to god at that time god take me out of this hell dark hell dark and wet hell this time i will not forget why you have given me this birth but then we forget again temporary goals become the permanent thing for us how much we have cried for this world worldly achievements and how much we have cried for god's love we have to answer that question to ourselves love alone enhances love devotion given at the lord's altar increases the existing devotion in the heart of the seeker love feeds upon love only the more we give the more it increases so practice of love regular and sincere is the means of enhancing and expanding our love for god so these two examples of the palace and the dinner narad ji is indicating the gyan and the mutual dependence and its own fulfillment so he is actually summarizing the last three verses that's why i'm just kind of elaborating on it so love for the lord in one's heart grows only but the love one gives 
and that's where the very sacrifices they they really become they just automatically lovingly we do the sacrifices so next verse also is connected with this uh let's just quickly do that also because it is a, a, a it won't be fair to leave it in the midway just let me just go through it quickly and then we can have some question answers natein raj paritoshah kshuda shanti hi parvah no means not ten means because of it or by knowledge alone raj paritoshah the favor of the king kshuda shanti parvah appeasement of hunger kshuda means hunger shanti over here means appeasement it's like a shant kshuda shant <coughs> so because of it a mere knowledge alone neither the favor of the king nor the appeasement of hunger can ever happen so you can see that this is in connection with the previous verse so both of them are together so merely because one knows the king and often visits the royal palace he cannot gain the favors of the king you got to be connected with him through service or through whatever way do your duty then you will have the favor and the same way for the food also as i mentioned earlier you got to learn how to mix those ingredients together willing to prepare serve and then you will enjoy the dinner so these two examples narad ji is uh, he wants to indicate that by a mere knowledge of what is devotion and it springs we shall never come to gain the end of sorrow and reach the realm so because we want to have the bliss we cannot have that bliss just with the knowledge alone we must seek and strive love and serve in order to come to experience the nature of the infinite truth that's what sadhana is we sing the glory of the lord but we got to learn how to love serve strive seek so on the whole this noble son of the creator naraji very emphatically is asserting that there is no single source from which devotion springs forth without devotees honest sincere and full participation and intelligent involvement this love cannot grow we cannot just cry over here and keep sitting doing nothing we got to definitely participate <clears throat> just like a about the palace also or serving the king also participation is ne needed so mere knowledge does not satisfy mere knowledge will not take you far often this knowledge we see that in people like us if we have ego also this knowledge becomes impediment in devotion i am more knowledgeable i have studied so much quickly let me give you one real example there was a one scholar came to vrindavan it was like a 500 years ago and there was a roop goswami pad he was the head of that place over there and then he was like a top scholar then there is a sanatan goswami brother of roop goswami ji so roop goswami was the head then sanatan goswami was his younger brother then they had a nephew also his name was jeev goswami so this another go a scholar came to vrindavan and he wanted to have a debate with the roop goswami pad so reep roop goswami said i do not want to have any discussion no debates i don't have time for such debate 
So this scholar went to the younger brother. Younger brother also said, I really do not. And back then they used to have, a, 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 whenever they had a, a, a debates like that, a person who lost will have to sign the papers that I lost. I consider you at the higher level. So these both brothers that said, we don't have time. We don't want to argue. Then he goes to the nephew. And nephew, he was younger. And he said, okay, I will have a debate with you. And he won. And this scholar signed the paper that I have lost. So this nephew goes to the Rup Goswamiji, and he said, I won, because I won, that means you have won too. Rup Goswamiji said, you are not worthy of devotion. Go away from me now. Never come in front of me. Why? Because in devotion, there should not be any room for unnecessary arguments. Because when you are engaged in argumentation, that means your love of God was not there. How can you take the time out for debates? So that's how the knowledge can become an impediment for love. So there are several other examples like that, that the real devotees, they shunned this. So to end for knowledge is love for God. If the end does not take place, the knowledge is useless. So if you are having the knowledge for your own name and fame, your own name on the certificate, that means it was not for love for God. In Ramayan it said, yoga ku yoga, gyan agyanu, jahan nahi ram prem pardhanu. Very clearly, Tulsi Das is saying, if the knowledge is devoid of devotion, it is a ku yoga. Yoga ku yoga gyan agyanu. If the knowledge is devoid of devotion, it is ku yoga. Every scripture is pointing towards the love for God. That's what we take it from here how to love God, okay? So attach your mind and heart to God alone. So let's stop it here. Then we will start with verse number 33 next week. Any question? Um, Poonam? Harji? Yes, what was the last word you said? The knowledge is devoid of devotion. It is what? Kuyog? Kuyog. Kuyog, okay. And See, yoga, ku yoga. So that, so like a ku yoga means, <laughs> it's like a, you are trying to unite. This knowledge is supposed to unite you with God, but you are uniting with your own ego. Yeah. Or your name and fame. So it becomes a ku yoga. Okay. It's I had a question. Uh, earlier you said that uh, do not use this, do not use God for this world. But then you also said, do not use this word for God. That I didn't understand. Uh, do not use this word See, it's almost like, a, like a, see, sometimes uh, we go to God to ask for the world. Yeah, that I got. Okay, then uh, we go to some worldly place. So we think we are going to God. Hmm. We are hmm. using the world for God also. Like, for example... Tirath Yatra. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Got it? Yeah, that was easy, but I got so confused about it. I know, I know. I, I, that is not my uh, intention here to confuse you. No, no, no. That's okay. Sometimes these words just come out. Uh, yeah, yeah, it has. No. So I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't understanding which way that would be. Yeah, so that is I the know. one. Because we think that by using the world, we can reach mm -hmm. God. Mm hmm so we need to learn the means is God and the end is God. Yeah. Okay. Manju. Yeah. Uh, yes, Yoti. Manju. Yes, Manju. Yes, Namaste, Harshi. Can you Namaste. hear me? I know in this yeah, room. Yes, so. I can. Achha. So, but uh, in Brahma Sutras, 
And even in other uh, scriptures, we say in uh, Sanatan Dharma, we were all, they always invited a discussion or, uh, you know, like as compared to the last verse, you know, chat, you know somebody wants to, what was the word you said uh, between two people? Mm -hmm. the chat about God or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discussion, so, debates about God. The debate, okay. Yeah, debates. Yeah. yeah. Debate uh, to know the truth. Right. Is encouraged. But yes. debate uh, for your own name and fame. Because oh, this that guy, I have more knowledge and you I don't have more like knowledge. that. I am higher than you. So this uh, scholar was coming for that. Yeah. And Ruth Goswamiji, he knew why he was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said no he point in wasting. He, he didn't have to win anything. He mm -hmm. was immersed in God. It's okay to have a debate, but to know about God. Not about your own, like I, I have more devotees or I know more than you do. So that's why I said the means should be love and end should be love too. So knowledge for loving God more. Mm -hmm. And when we love God more, knowledge comes with it. That's what Lord Krishna said. Buddhi yoga dadami, I give it to you. When we are connected with the higher, like an intuition, or even the Vedas, the Mahavakyas, how they were written, it was just poured to them. They did not say, oh gosh, I have written this now. No, they never even took ownership of that. Okay, so that's it. We have forgotten uh, <clears throat> this part. So now also, if you are studying all this, we got to see after studying every day, sure, study is good. Even debate is good, but a debate for further clarification and from further clarification, more love for God. Yeah. Who is God? That it? Is that clear now, Anju? Yes, yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, Pramila? Pramila? <laughs> <clears throat> Namaste, Hashi. Namaste. Um, in verse 30, you said something like when you are praying, uh, you should not ask for something and everything happens automatically. Could you just clarify that? Uh, yeah. Because when we are asking for something when we are praying, what are we doing? We are dictating God. God, I'm doing this. So it's a business relationship then. I'm doing yes. this for you. I have given so much money to your temples. Please give me this. That's a business relationship. So Naraj is taking us. See, that is called a, that is also a bhakti. That's a upper bhakti, lower stages of bhakti. Naraj is taking us towards the par bhakti, where we just have a total. Uh, uh, you have just uh, dedicated yourself. You say, God, whatever you do, your desire is okay with me. So he is taking us towards. So this scripture is about the parbhakti, by the way, not a, a parbhakti. He's not saying, it's not that we cannot ask God, but if at a lower level, sure, it's okay to ask God. We often talk about that, but this is a higher bhakti. Okay? So mm -hmm. in that sense, understand it. Okay. Thank That's you. That's why God Christian also, when he used the four kinds of devotees, he said, they're all very dear to me. Arth also, Artha Arthi also, Jigyasu also, Gyani also. But then he said, Gyani is Parampriya to me. Others are also, he says, they are pious. They're coming to me, but they're still at a lower level. So other three are a parbhakti. Gyani knows the parbhakti. And here's a great teacher is taking us towards that higher level of bhakti. Is it clear yeah. now, Pramila? Yeah, it is clear. Uh, but it takes you, like, when I'm in my altar, I do pray for everyone. I do the parbhakti. But no, to don't reach... pray for everyone. Praying for everyone is not a parbhakti. 
So but what is it? God and God alone. Hey, I want you, God. Don't even serve a bhavan to sukhina. It's not a par bhakti. Okay. Par bhakti is I want only God. <laughs> so okay. Okay. Har ji, Har ji, I am thinking till we are still in a state of fear, we cannot be no par bhakti. Because when we have fear, we're gonna ask. We're gonna go pray, because we have that fear of anything. It could be death or this or that or certain. So unless we conquer our fear, we cannot reach the par bhakti that we are talking about. It won't happen. The fear that is within our hearts about being in this world, and we are always fearful. We cannot reach that that state of bhakti. So that's so we why have, we, we have to conquer that's our fear. That's why we got to work on. That's a sadhana yeah. to get rid yeah. of the fear. Yeah. Fear is a impediment to bhakti. Yes. Okay. So that is a Lord Krishna put that on the topmost quality, the number one quality for a jnani. Abhay. Abhay. Yeah. Abhay means a fearlessness. We got to get rid of the fear. Yeah. Um, I'm working on it, but it takes a long time. It's okay. You know? It's all right. Keep on working. That's all. <laughs> you are not the only one. Okay. <laughs> there's no. Yeah. There's no no time time limit. It's okay. God says it's okay. We are working on it for several lives. We can keep on working. That's okay too. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Shimi ji. Shimi. Ah, uh, uh, bolye. Uh, do you have a question? No. Did I do something? I didn't do. I didn't touch anything. Okay. You are muted. That's okay. Neetuji. Um, Harshi, uh, grateful from my heart for expressing so much about bhakti. It's so truly blessed to hear all the true bhakti. And um, I'm really awed because it's so misunderstood, even the bhakti and the gyan. And uh, yes. you explained it so nicely yes. that love, which we all talk about love, 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 but love is also not very clear in our mind what true love is, unless we have the love for God. And that's what I want to share. And also the fear disappears as the love grows with, because the faith increases in the result. The, so I'm really yeah. happy. And what I also realized in my experience, even that bhakti, the power of ego steals it out of me, that he becomes superior all that awakening and awareness that comes because the truth is living through me, but I always have this, ego is always hungry for that power and he will try to uh, uh, put the conscious down and rise about to take the reward. You know what I'm saying, actually? So reward is the uh, yeah. uh, uh, sad, sadistic thing that comes and steals, like, I think there are so many stories about that. Even the biggest uh, biggest jnanis had this much jnana and bhakti, but the ego uh, took that away. And God always tries to kill that ego, even yes. sadhus and santas. And that's what I feel that it's like, uh, yes. how to, how to ha start diminishing the yes. ego power and um, coming yeah. the humility and saying, God, it's all because of you. It's all because of you. It's to me, yeah. uh, Nitu, the, to me, the best and the easiest way to let go of the ego is uh, remember your guru. Okay. Guru, okay. You, 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 you are a guru devotee and a guru was knew so much more yeah. than you do. Like in my yes. guruji, yeah. If if I if he was an ocean, I'm just a drop of a water. Yes. So if yes. he was not arrogant and egoistic, how can I be? Yeah. Having yeah. a guru in a life kills our ego. Okay. Okay. Just remember your guru. Yeah. Okay. How can I be some like a, a, a very? This is a very practical uh, way of looking at it. Okay. Uh, because if somebody tells me that uh, Hush, you know so much, I say in my own heart, I don't even have to say it. In my own mind and heart, I say, I, whatever I know, it's also his. And still okay. I know only so much less. How okay. can I be arrogant? And I never saw him. Okay. The true guru, the sat guru, yeah. is one who is not arrogant. Yes. My guruji, yeah. I remember he 
Even doctor said that this this uh, uh, this is a dead body, and if he said that no, he'll wake up, and they did wake up. Oh, your father? And he never said I did. He said no oh. one did. If he wow. had that kind of a power, where he could, I mean, I heard it, saw it with my own eyes. These miracles happening, and he never took ownership of that. How can I have the ego? I just remember him. So just a very I, uh, thing to do. Remember your guru. Remember okay. guru, the ego. Okay. So is it is it like a God is testing our bhakti? Through ego, no, I mean, God is not testing anything. God okay. doesn't need to test. That is a misnomer. I tell you that. Okay. Okay. This is a, this is just like a work of the nature. God doesn't test. God God, God doesn't have the time to test us all like that. <laughs> okay. God is God is very busy doing very important things. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. why don't why does it happen? I mean, we on oh, one side we, we are, do it. We, are... we create it. Our own ego creates it. Oh. Our own misunderstandings create it. We have to just get this uh, uh, through our head. <laughs> okay. I know it's so beautiful. My new talk. We hear you, and that's what you say, Guru. We we idolize the gurus. We see the qualities of the guru, but we only talk about guru. We don't. And reflect on those qualities. Yeah, that's why Nitu, somebody said that. हम कहते हैं गुरु क्या कहता है? क्या हम करते हैं जो गुरु कहता है? Yeah, very true, very true. है ना? So yeah. You have to do what Guru says, not only say what Guru says. <laughs> okay. Not only that, the real and seva. I remember huh. asking my Guruji, what is a real seva? He said, the real seva is uh, do what Guru says. Okay, okay. Because you are known by your Guru, just like we are known by our parents. Daughter okay. of such and such. Yeah. Shishya of such and such a Guru. Okay. We got to remember that even more. Yeah. We don't want yeah. to blemish our parents' name. Because no. our generation, it was very important to us. Yeah, the whole yeah. town knew us. Yeah. And my own mother used to say, "Kis baap ke bete bete ho?" Yeah. Okay, I'm sure you all heard that. Ki kis yeah. family se belong karti ho? Par kis guru ke ham bache hain? Yeah. We got to remember that also. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So these Thank are the you. things to remember and to just bring into our practical life so that we keep on enhancing ourselves. Okay? okay. But good okay. questions, good discussion. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. you all. So uh, anybody else, any question? Jyoti, do we have a Padmini today or no? But Padmini is not here, I don't think. Padmini is not here. So uh, uh, who yes, like yes, to... I'm here. I'm here. I'm just off okay, the video. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, but Promise me she'll be here on Tuesdays. So, Padmini, <laughs> thank you. You can sing a bhajan for us. Have, and uh, have, uh, that, uh, we can have a uh, request.